I decided I was going to uh, do this problem in a video that maybe this would be more helpful. Whenever you want to solve this in the Gauss-Jordan row echelon form, the first thing you must start with is the augmented matrix. And all the augmented matrix is, is stripping away the variables. So we're going to have our first column as 2 and 3. We think of that as the X column. And then 5 and minus 1. And we think of that as the Y column. And then the little dashed lines just separates that from the constants, minus 19 and minus 3. So we begin with the augmented matrix. Now, what is it we're trying to obtain from that? Well, Gauss-Jordan row reduced echelon form is simply transforming that previous augmented matrix into one that looks exactly like this one. 1, 0, 0, 1 must be here. And I don't know what the numbers are, so I have question marks. But when I get the numbers, by transformation of the matrix into this form, I immediately know what x is because this means 1x plus no y's equals this number. And this means no x's plus 1y equals that number. So basically I have x equals that and y equals that. And that's what Gauss-Jordan is, regardless of the size of the matrix. Now, how are we going to transform the previous matrix into our uh, Gauss-Jordan row reduced echelon form. Well, we're going to do it one step at a time. Now, the first thing is we want to get the 1 in this first column. Right now, there's a 2 there. Well, because this is an equation, I can use a rule, and the R1, R2 basically means that's, I'm calling that row 1 and this row 2 of the matrix. Since this is an equation, remember there's a rule that says you can divide through an equation by any non-zero number you want. So if I divide this equation through by 2, that gives me the 1 I need. So that's what I'm going to do. Row 1 divided by 2 is 2 over 2, 5 over 2, and minus 19 over 2. Now at that point, I'm going to rewrite my matrix. So I have 1, 5 halves, minus 19 over 2, and then 3 minus 1 minus 3. That didn't change. All right, and so now our next step is to show how we're going to get the 0 where the 3 is now. In order to get the 0, I'm going to also use properties of equations. I can multiply through this equation by negative 3, the opposite of that and then add this row to it. So I'm multiplying row 1 by negative 3, and then I'm going to add row 2. And here's the result. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 5 halves will be negative 15 halves. And negative 3 times negative 19 halves will be positive 57 halves. All right, next I'm going to add row 2. So I'm copying it down. Uh, now minus 1 will have to be changed to minus 2 over 2, and minus 3 will have to be changed to minus 6 over 2 so we can combine the fractions. But minus 3 plus 3 gives us the 0 we want. Minus 15 plus minus 2 is minus 17 halves. And 57 minus 6 would be 51 halves. Now, again, this is just another form of our equation. You'll notice that since both denominators are 2, we could just um, multiply through by 2. And we would get still 0, but we would lose the fraction and just have minus 17 and 51. All right, now it's time to rewrite our matrix again. The only thing we're changing is this row 2 down here. Row 1 stays the same. So it's going to be 1, 5 halves, 
minus 19 halves, and then this is our new row 2, 0, minus 17, and 51. All right, now this has been copied on the next sheet where we will now keep going until we reach the desired matrix. All right, the first thing is now that we've got the first column like we want it, 1, 0, the next thing is to work on column 2, and we always start with the 1, where we want the 1. Now, I want the 1 where that minus 17 is. I can get a 1 very easily by just simply dividing the whole row by minus 17. 0 divided by a number is 0. Minus 17 divided by minus 17 will be 1, and 51 divided by minus 17 turns out to be a nice number, minus 3. So this is going to be the new row 2, and you can see I have now three numbers that I want, 1, 0, and the 1. So the last one to be changed will be the 5 halves, which I need to turn that into a 0. Now before um, we do that, if we were to stop at this particular point, the process would be called Gaussian elimination, not Gauss-Jordan. Gauss-Jordan has to give you 1001 here so that you actually read off the answers. But with Gaussian elimination, it's like you get to leave off some of that work because I already know now what the value of y is going to be because this is 0x plus 1y is equal to minus 3. So I have my answer for y, and I could just go back to the this equation or even the original equations that we started with and plug in that value for uh, y and come out with my x, and that's called back substitution. And for 3 by 3 matrices, that's exactly the method we use because uh, it's less work than going all the way to Gauss-Jordan. But with a 2 by 2, it's not so bad. Now, how do we get the 0 there? Well, in a way, we're going to do the same thing we did to get the zero here. We're going to use this row to multiply by and then add it to this one. Well, what do I have to multiply that by and add to that to make zero? And the answer, of course, is minus 5 halves. So I multiply zero by minus 5 halves and I get zero. I multiply one by minus 5 halves and I get minus 5 halves. And then minus three times minus 5 halves is 15 halves. Then I copy the top equation down, 1, 5 halves, and minus 19 halves. Add them together, I get 1, 0, and another nice number, minus 4 halves, which is minus 2. Now, I've got to copy that into one last matrix. All right. Here's our top equation now, 1, 0, minus 2. This is the one we just figured out. This is the one we already had. And now we can read the answers. X is equal to minus 2, and Y is equal to minus 3. And of course, we can go back to the original equations and check that result.